Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about how hydrogen bombs work. This is a different type of nuclear weapon compared to plutonium or uranium weapons, which we've discussed in a previous video. So by way of introduction, we're going to talk about the plutonium bomb again, because you'll see that it's actually pretty important in getting a hydrogen bomb to work. So plutonium fission bombs are some of the first nuclear weapons developed during World War II and one of the first ones deployed. What we do in a plutonium fission bomb is we take plutonium, bombard it with a neutron, and it makes it split apart or it undergoes fission. It falls apart into both xenon and zirconium or a number of other nuclei. The important part is it just falls apart. And when it does that, some mass is destroyed and that releases energy. It releases then three neutrons. So you put one neutron in, you get three out. So you've made on net two neutrons, which can now go out and strike plutonium again and again, causing more and more fission chain reactions. The key to getting this bomb to work is that you have to get plutonium into a critical state. And the way they do that is you start with a plutonium core and you compress it. And once it's compressed, it goes into this fission chain reaction. The way you compress it is with a bunch of conventional explosives. So these are just old school explosives and they're centered around that core. When they go off, that core goes and is compressed to a higher density. And that's what ultimately makes this fission reaction begin. So when you compare plutonium fission bombs with our hydrogen bombs, they're pretty different. Plutonium uses fission, that is the falling apart of atoms, and its yield is about 20 kilotons of TNT. What that means is, imagine you have a pile of 20,000 tons of TNT. So that's a huge, giant pile of TNT. So that's a big yield. However, hydrogen bombs have a way, way higher yield, about 500 times higher or more. Hydrogen bombs actually use fusion, which Fusion means the bringing together of two nuclei. So it's the opposite process, still a nuclear reaction, still destroys mass and creates a bunch of energy. And actually, in the process of setting off a hydrogen bomb, you use fission as well. Actually, we'll see most of the energy still comes from fission, but fusion it plays a key role as well. And the yield can be up to 10,000 kilotons of TNT or even higher. So a way, way more powerful, way, way more complex weapon. We developed these after World War II, and so they, re they represent a step of increased complexity in our nuclear weapons. So how do they work? Well, first let's go through the different parts of our hydrogen bomb. Now, stage one is a fission implosion bomb. So this bomb goes off in two stages. The fission implosion bomb is up here. That's basically just the plutonium bomb we've already looked at. So that's just one part of our nuclear weapon. Stage two has fission and fusion occur down here. And so we'll talk about all the different parts in our stage two. We've already looked at the fission implosion bomb. So let's take a closer look at what happens in the bottom of this device. In the very center, in that light gray, we see the plutonium spark plug right there. And on the outside, we see lithium-6. That's in the blue. So what happens in this bomb, eventually, is my implosion bomb goes off here, and then I also get my plutonium inside my fusion fuel to go off, and that compresses and heats up my lithium fuel, causing it to undergo fusion. All right, let's keep looking at these different parts, and we'll talk about those steps in more detail. So this gray outside casing is called a uranium tamper. It's made of uranium-238, and we'll see that eventually what it does most likely is undergoes additional fission. I say most likely because there's actually details of this bomb that we're still uncertain of. So what I'm presenting here is one proposed way that it works. But the exact method of how these hydrogen bombs work is actually still classified, and that seems good. Don't worry, all the information I'm sharing is already widely publicly available, so I'm not giving you know, any terrorists any good ideas. These things are really hard to construct. Okay, so the plastic foam out here is shown in yellow. So this is a polystyrene foam. And this, like I said, is just one proposal of how this works. So this foam is a very particular part of this exact proposal for how a hydrogen bomb might work. Okay, so what's the first step? Well, the very first thing we do to get this hydrogen bomb going is we set off our plutonium implosion device. So that means we set off those conventional explosives that compress that plutonium core, cause it to undergo fission, and explode in a nuclear reaction. That is going to create a bunch of heat and also a bunch of radiation. And radiation, remember, is just anything that you're radiating in the form of energy. It could be a light or a particle. In this case, it's x-rays. So step two is actually that x-rays 
from step one, strike the plastic. So a bunch of x-rays come out of our plutonium bomb and they're reflected off of the casing of the bomb. And what this does is it heats up that plastic and actually creates a plasma out of it. And that plastic and that high temperature play a critical role in transferring enough energy to our plutonium core here, this plutonium spark plug, to get it to undergo fission. This is the step, by the way, where there's the most uncertainty. This is just one proposal for how the energy from the implosion bomb gets transferred to our plutonium spark plug. There's other proposals as well. All right, so that plutonium spark plug, because of the heat from all of those x-rays making a plasma out of the plastic in step two, causes the plutonium spark plug to ignite. So now notice what we have. We have a bunch of heat and energy pressing in from the outside onto our lithium. And we have, let me use a different color there so you can see that highlight better. So there's our lithium. So it's getting uh, pressure from the outside from the initial plutonium implosion device up here and pressure from the inside from our plutonium spark plug. Now, this is precisely the conditions you need for fusion. You need really, really high temperatures and pressures. So when you get really high temperatures and pressure, you can start to squeeze nuclei together. The reason you need such high temperatures is that to get two nuclei to touch each other, you're forcing two positive things together, right? So if I have a nuclei, my nuclei has a bunch of protons in it. And I have to get another nuclei, also with protons in it, to come together. So you can see those two positive things that we're cramming together. And that takes a lot of energy. Once they get close enough, then there's the chance for a fusion reaction. So step four, and the final step, is that fusion begins. It turns out that the lithium in the bomb becomes hydrogen and then undergoes fusion. Now, the trick here is that that heat and energy and neutrons that are coming from all of this actually go and strike that uranium tamper and it undergoes additional fission, which is where a significant portion of the energy actually comes from. So fusion is just one small part of this. You can see that this bomb has fission and fusion and has a bunch of different steps of nuclear reactions. The end result of all these nuclear reactions is a way larger release of energy compared to our first weapon that we looked at, the plutonium implosion device. And the result that comes from those differences is enormous. So what's shown here is the radius and yield of our different weapons. This is the radius just of the fireball. So when you look at what happens when a nuclear weapon goes off, there's an enormous fireball, but there's also waves of pressure that go out from the fireball and also radiation. So there's way more terrible and horrible, unfortunately, things going on besides just the fireball. This shows just that. So this is just the smallest little radius you could consider. In the red here, we have the Tsar Bomba. That's the biggest hydrogen bomb ever set off. It was set off by Russia. And its radius for the fireball is 2.3 kilometers, or basically about one and a half miles. So enormous. A one and a half mile area would be covered in a fireball. Castle Bravo is the largest device ever set off by the United States. It had a 15 megaton yield and just about a mile radius. The green and blue are also hydrogen weapons, but they are smaller intentionally. The pink, that one, is our plutonium implosion device. So you can see that the plutonium implosion device is absolutely teeny compared to these hydrogen weapons. So they're terrifying and destructive forces that we've been able to create. Whether we're glad about this, I'll leave for you to decide.